And there it is, the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange, signaling the end of another trading day. The major indexes were in the green all day, with the Dow Jones ending up around 430 points. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ also ended with gains. The S&P is up more than 1.5%, and the tech-heavy tech NASDAQ is also up more than 2.5%. Helene Braun, U.S. markets reporter at Coindesk, joins us now for more in the studio here. Helene, welcome. Uh, major stock indexes may have had a good day, but the crypto uh, market uh, was, again, pretty volatile uh, throughout the day. W what sectors do you think are, are driving the markets? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks so much for having me. Um, you know, the last week was wild in the crypto world. Bitcoin crashed to 25,000, which is a 52-week low. And frankly, we haven't seen this number since December 2020. Um, so this is quite significant. This is also the first time in Bitcoin's history that we're seeing a seven-week um, losing streak. Um, so you can see the markets are really um, struggling right now. Um, and, you know, all of this has to do, it seems to have to do with the Fed meeting last week. Um, the Federal Reserve started hiking rates, um, continued to hike rates um, with a 50 basis point hike. And, you know, this was something that was expected by the market. Um, but still, inflation remains high. It's at a fourth decade high. Um, so this is not good for the stock or the crypto market. It's hard to overcome that. Yeah. And Helene, you, you mentioned that the, you know, cryptocurrencies have certainly had a rough couple of weeks. That seems to be something, though, that we're seeing more and more of uh, in that currency. And also we're seeing that the, the crypto market is moving a little bit more in tandem with the overall market. What do you think is driving that? Yeah, so, you know, one key narrative in 2021 was the arrival of institutional investors to the market. Um, we saw companies like Tesla by billions of Bitcoin. We saw Wall Street banks like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley. Um, they started allocating client assets to Bitcoin. And back then, it really started a boom in crypto and crypto's market cap um, increased by 185%. Now we're sort of seeing um, the other side of the coin. Um, institutional investors, their psychology behind trading is very different from traditional crypto investors. Um, and so, the correlation to the stock market is what some analysts say because of that increased institutional interest. Yeah, and to that point, you know, a lot of the appeal early on for crypto was that it was separate from the from the stock market. It, you know, it was something uh, individuals could get rich from. It was new. It had somewhat of an underground feel to it. Um, so, what are some of the potential negative impacts of crypto that now shifting to a more uh, sort of corporate reliance? Yeah, so if we look at traditional crypto investors, they really are in crypto because they believe in the technology behind Bitcoin. They believe in the technology behind other cryptos, and they really, you know, want this um, new monetary system, let's say, um, to succeed. Um, whereas Wall Street banks, they're in it for the money. They, mm -hmm. you, they, they sort of use crypto um, in their portfolio. They want exposure to crypto, um, and they treat it sort of like a tech stock. Um, and so when the stock market crashes, when the stock market goes down, um, they sell all of their assets. Right. You know, there's this saying um, in traditional markets, um, in crisis, correlation goes to one. And this is exactly what we're seeing right now. The stock market crashes and traders are selling all of their assets. They don't right. just leave out crypto. It's so interesting. You're right. Like the, the new investor or the more corporate investor doesn't really care about the crypto culture or any of the crypto ideology. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's just an opportunity. Another, it's just another yeah. tool to make yeah. money. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. All right. Well, Helene Braun, U.S. markets reporter at Coindesk, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight. Thank you.